Are you tired of being blinded when you drive at night by these new super bright lights? Why does this happen? And more importantly, how can you stop it? And are you even guilty of it yourself? I'm Chris from Redlines Garage. Stick around to find out the answer to these questions and more. Now we all need light to see. On a dark night, on a lonely, unlit road, it's even more important. So for years, the automotive industry has been developing new ways to improve the efficiency of the bulbs that are used. Before we get started then, let's take a brief look at the different types of light systems that are commonly used today, since they are relevant to the topic. Now for the last few decades, the halogen bulb, a type of incandescent bulb, has been the mainstay of lighting, and up until relatively recently, that hadn't really changed much. They're filled with an inert gas mixture, and a small filament inside is heated up to a temperature that produces light. They work well enough, but they're far from efficient. In fact, in most cases, they convert less than 5% of the energy used into actual light, and the rest is just wasted as heat. They also tend to burn in a less appealing yellow color range that just doesn't look as good and seems outdated in the modern world. Now, while there have been some improvements over the years, by today's standards, these bulbs are still quite inefficient. Enter then the HID or High Intensity Discharge Bulbs. These bulbs are filled with a new type of gas mix, most often xenon, that create light by means of an electric arc between two electrodes. Now these HID kits, like most fluorescent lights, are also usually combined with a ballast to help start and regulate the bulb. They're significantly brighter than halogen bulbs and tend to have a more appealing color range closer to the 5 to 6,000 Kelvin range of daylight. This ballast and bulb combination though, were overall more expensive than typical halogen bulbs. So as a result, initially, they tended to be found in vehicles with a higher trim or more luxury type vehicle. Eventually though, aftermarket HID retrofit options also became available at a much cheaper price. But these kits with their ballasts, their wang harnesses and their bulbs are more cumbersome difficult to install and have more parts that can potentially fail. Which leads us to the current and most popular aftermarket light upgrade right now. And that is the LED or light emitting diode. As the name suggests, this is not really a bulb in the traditional sense, but really a semiconductor light source that emits light when it receives power. Now there are a variety of different configurations and chip types, which we're not going to get into right now, but this is the most efficient light technology on the market, whether it's for home or commercial, indoor or outdoor use, or even in the automotive lighting industry. They're the standard now when it comes to lighting system upgrades. They use less power, produce more light, last longer, and are easier to install than the HID bulbs mentioned earlier. So now we have a little background to work with. So let's say you're driving on the road and someone with these new lights is driving towards you and you have to slow down look away, pull over, and maybe even scream a few choice words out of your window. It would be easy to conclude that these lights are just too bright and they don't belong on the road. But take a breath. Before we pull out our pitchforks and go round up the offenders, let's consider a few things. First of all, I'm sure we can all agree that good lighting is an important part of safe driving. The more we can see, the better aware we are of our surroundings and the quicker we can react or respond to situations that may come up. Secondly, all of the systems we talked about have been adopted and are being used by all of the major vehicle brands in one way or another. So this technology isn't going anywhere and in fact, it's still evolving. So then what is actually responsible for that blinding light? Is it simply the amount of light being output? Well, yes and no. A brighter light, of course, amplifies an existing problem and will make a bad situation worse, but it's not the real cause. So what is? Well, consider one of the brightest light sources we all know, the sun. We don't have to be reminded how bright the sun is. We just have to go outside or we know what happens if we try to stare at it. Now, around midday, the sun is at the highest in the sky. It's producing far more light than any man-made bulb can. But if we're in our cars driving around that time of day, it's usually not a problem. But what happens, let's say, around sunset if you happen to be driving west? Now, the sun is a lot dimmer since it's setting, 
but it now happens to be shining directly into our eyes, causing us to pull down our visors so we don't run off the road. The same thing happens if we take even a small 5 watt flashlight and shine it in our eyes. It hurts, even though the light isn't that bright. So it's not just the amount of light being produced, but more so how much of that light is getting into our eyes. But why then does this seem to happen mostly with these aftermarket bulbs? Well, there are several reasons. Sometimes it's as simple as forgetting your high beams on. When you turn on your high beam, the light doesn't actually get brighter, but the angle of that light changes to a higher one, allowing that light to shine a little further, but also creating the issue we just mentioned of allowing it to shine in the eyes of oncoming vehicles. So this just takes being a bit more mindful and a simple turn of your switch and the problem is solved. Oftentimes though, when bulbs are graded, even on a lower beam, the issue still remains. But why? Well, let's consider four main reasons. First of all, there are many poorly manufactured lights on the market, where the diode or the light source is the wrong distance from the base, causing the light pattern to shine incorrectly, which is why it is so important to purchase a bulb of a higher quality that is constructed properly, since even a slight variation can cause a significant change in the way that light is dispersed. Another common issue is improper installation. Now these bulbs are usually considered plug and play, but because there are always small variations in manufacturing processes and vehicle design, all headlights come with the necessary ability to adjust the angle of the headlights. This is a crucial but often overlooked step when changing out your bulbs and accounts for the vast majority of problems that drivers have with these setups. It's not a difficult process by any means, and we're sure you can probably do it yourself at home. So we urge you to take the time to make those adjustments and show consideration for other road users while also improving the usable light that you benefit from. We aren't going to cover it in this video, but we do have a step-by-step -step tutorial in another video which we'll link to down below, showing you just how easy and simple it is to do. Another concern that can be contributing to the problem is the headlight itself, primarily the lens. Most modern headlights use plastic for their lenses instead of glass because it's cheaper, lighter, and can be more easily produced in a variety of shapes and styles. After a time though, that protective coating on that lens can deteriorate, causing your lens to become discolored or even look like it's peeling. Not only is this unattractive, but it actually robs you of some of your light output. And instead of allowing that light to shine through in a nice clean pattern, it causes it to be diffused, spreading that light into more random beams, allowing some of it, again, to make its way into the eyes of oncoming traffic. The process necessary to restore and protect your headlight is also covered in the video in the link down below. And finally, another often overlooked but important step you can take to protect yourself is very simple. Clean your windscreen. The same principle affecting your headlight lens can also affect your windshield if it's dirty or smudged. Instead of that light entering at a nice clean angle, it can hit that dirty windscreen and diffuse into your eyes. It's important to remember to clean both the outside as well as the inside of the windscreen because very often overspray from cleaning products when you wipe down your dashboard can cause a film, an oily film to be spread on the inside and will take some cleaning to remove properly. So those are the main things that cause unnecessary irritation from headlights at night. Remember, purchase high quality, properly constructed bulbs. Remember to be considerate and adjust the headlights to get that light where you can see it best and where it won't bother other users. Be part of the solution, not part of the problem. And finally, remember to keep your headlight lenses and your windshield as clean and clear as possible. If you do these things, we guarantee that you will make driving at night a far more enjoyable experience for yourself and others. Thanks so much for watching. If this video has helped you in any way, please consider liking and subscribing for future content. And remember, drive safe.